Okay, guys, I got a couple more uh, tanks to go through. Most of these are communal. Um, this one here is. Uh, prop this up. Got your. Uh, I don't know if you say it Eublabris or Eblabris, but you got your Prosticus, your Distanti, and your Ivories. And then I got the Bisotria Rothi, or the Roth's uh, Giant Burrowing Roach. And these guys are in a relatively small container because they can't climb. Um, smooth surfaces at all, so they don't need to worry about that at all. They're just like, you can house them just like you can discoids if you really want to, but I keep them sealed, just keeping the moisture. You can see all the humidity in the tank, all the moisture on the lid and all that. And uh, I, I do that because I think that that really reduces the wing biting in the orange heads, which seems to be a pretty big problem for them. Um, they like to gnaw the wings of each other uh, for, I think it's moisture. Other people say it's for protein. Um, they don't seem to do it too bad in my colonies. This one's a little mauled, but overall they're not too bad. This is an orange head here, a uh, uh, Eublabris prosticus. And they're pretty roaches, but they do have a pretty nasty uh, defensive odor. I'm not really sure what I can describe it like, but I really don't care for it. It's like a really pungent version of the uh, Discoid's defensive odor which is really, in my opinion, also unpleasant. But only the adults make it, so... If you happen to find sub-adults, well, you don't have to worry about it. Here is a couple of uh, the Distantes. The, uh... Let me get them to stop running here. You see, they look really similar to the orange heads, but their pronotum markings are a little bit different. Um, really pretty roaches, though. And... They do really well in this kind of substrate because they like to burrow. Um, all the uh, stages of, from the first instar nymphs all the way to the adults, uh, they all stay buried in here. And you can see here's a, here's a nymph right here. And I think that's an ivory nymph. Uh, it has a lot of spots on it. I think that's what that is. Uh, it could be a prostate or a uh, distanti too. I'm not 100% sure on the nymphs just yet. They're relatively new in my collection. Um, I've had the orange heads for a while, but the other kind are pretty new. Um, this is a ivory right here, and they have yet a different promoter mark. Kind of a wider Rorschach test, kind of blotchy spot. Um, they're a lot lighter than the other ones too, um, hence ivory. I guess they kind of resemble that kind of look. I keep these guys all in a uh, single container just because they're all relatively uh, the same type of you know needs um, these are the rothy males right here I'm trying to grab um, I have two different color morph uh, you have your kind of a brown tan right here and then you have your black and I don't I have absolutely no idea why they are uh, different colors I I got them from the same breeder um, I got them as nymphs they were like that already um, no idea Here's a, uh, a female, and they all are the same color in my females anyway. And they have the short wing pads like that. And the Roths are pretty interesting, but I don't know how well they're breeding, because all the nymphs look almost exactly the same to me. Um, so I don't know if I'm actually getting Roths uh, babies in here. I know that there's lots and lots of orange head babies uh, mixed with in the substrate, but uh, the nymphs are relatively similar looking, and I... I haven't had them long enough to really be able to tell the difference. And when I had the uh, Roths in another container, they never actually bred for me to begin with, so I don't really know what their nymphs look like. Um, you can see there's, there's there's one running. They're relatively tiny when they first come out here. And I think that's probably an orange head, I'm going to say, just because it's super shiny like the other orange heads are. But it's really tiny. And oh, there's a bunch of those you know, first or second in star nymphs in here. So, you can see them flash around when I dig the substrate up. This is three to four inches deep. They all burrow, they all like to do it. Um, I keep them in this just because of that. And also, I seal them up because I want to keep the moisture in there to avoid the wing biting. So, um, if you guys have any questions about why I do it this way, feel free to ask me. Um, like I said in my other videos, I like to avoid using the uh, egg crates just because it, <laughs> they uh, 
excuse me, they, they mold really terribly in damp enclosures. So anything that's tropical or anything that has high humidity, they're just going to get disgusting really fast. And I don't really care for that. I like to have an easier, you know, container to take care of. And this, this does it for me. You know, a couple inches of cocoa fiber substrate, some plastic pieces in here to put food in, you know, little bowls and stuff like that to keep it off the substrate. And you're, you're golden with that. So that's how I take care of mine. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, give me a holler and I'll see what I can do.